lost ways. Hello, my favorite lost yaks, my favorite castaways. This is maybe the final episode of the Lost podcast because I finished Lost. Originally, I was going to like break down each season half and half. I just, I'm seven months pregnant. I got a little lazy. And yeah, I was just enjoying Lost. I really thought Lost was going to take me full term like up until my pregnancy and I'd be good. Like we finished Lost last night, all six seasons. We started about two months ago. Like it took us two months. We we binge watched on the weekends. We would watch like six episodes like a day. We really, we really loved Lost. And now we're like, what do we watch now? Um, so if you have any suggestions if for people who like Lost, let me know. Hulu referenced Revenge. It's like, do you want to watch the next, the season one, episode one of Revenge? I'm like, no, I don't think so. So <laughs> if you guys have any Lost kind of, I don't know. We went from Desperate Housewives to Lost, which was so completely like out of nowhere. So we might start once upon a time. I know Hurley, Saeed, and um, Juliet are in those. So, and Claire. So maybe we'll watch those so we can feel a little nostalgia. But yeah, today we're going to give out some awards for Lost, and we're going to talk about the finale. Let's just go. Let's just kick it off with the finale. So literally since day one, everyone's like, I hated the ending of Lost. Like every Lost fan is like, F Lost, like that last season, what the fuck? Like everyone was so pissed about the this, this series finale. So I was like, damn, okay. Like <laughs> people are really mad. And I looked up spoilers, and I saw that they were like in a church again. I didn't know like the, the context. I didn't watch the full thing. I just saw like a clip of it. I was like, all right, everyone's preparing me. Don't watch the last season. Don't watch the last episode, man. It really, it's fucked up. And everyone basically said that, like, it basically was like this cop out that basically everyone's dead on the island. The last episode was like, nope, everyone's actually dead. The island never happened. But that's not what I got from it at all. So maybe, I don't know, either I'm super hyper intelligent or I'm just a dumbass. The, the thing I got from it was like, oh, like everyone died at a certain point before after Jack. Like Jack, we saw his death in the light, I guess, on the island and stuff. So we saw him. He went out, died in the same position that the, the, the story started with, which is his plane crashing in that position. So then when he saw his dad, you know, he had this like sort of reconciliation with his dad, this sort of comfort. And his dad was just like, well, you know, some people died after. Some people died before you. And you guys all agreed to meet here and like go into the light, basically, because his dad went into the light. And basically they had this spot picked out for them to all meet. Because he said Jack's dad was like Christian Shepherd was just like, you know, these are the most those are the most important people. That was the most important time of your life. The, the time you spent on that island. So it was kind of like this meeting place. So for me, it wasn't like, oh, they're all in purgatory and they all had to die to get to heaven together, which you know, there was those theories. It's like they all had like their demons they had to like overcome. And like that's what the island was. And the only confusing thing. Is why like the island scouted them from like being a young children like Locke was visited by Richard and Jack was being watched by Jacob from a young age like it didn't really explain like that like why they were picked why they were chosen I guess ultimately Jack was there to protect the island sacrificed himself Hurley took over what made them special what made the island want them right there's billions of people in the world why did they go find them as like kids didn't really make much sense to me so that was the, and let me tell you, let me tell you, the finale was, I thought was really good. Like I was like bawling. I love the flashbacks. I love that they found each other in the flash sideways, which were kind of like parallel universe. But also to me, it was like reality. It was like, oh, they did do the island and they are also off the island. There was like two, two realities existed. That's what it like meant to me. And I thought that was so cool that they found each other in both realities. Like Libby found Hurley, Saeed found Sh Shannon and obviously all the main ones. Sawyer, Juliet, all that. So I thought that was really cool, but I will say, and like I was crying, I was crying, Sun and Jin, I was crying, I was crying for Claire and um, Charlie, like it just was like, it just felt good, I just felt like there was just so many tears. I liked it, I loved the finale, I loved that Ben was outside the church, so he kind of like wasn't finished yet, had his shit he still had to do, and I just, I just liked it, I thought it was a really good finale, so I was just like, why do people hate on that so much? I will say the show gets kooky. If you watch Lost, like, first season, everyone's like, first season's the best season. And, like, yeah, in sense of, like, it's very simple. It's, it's like, 
really strong characters, really strong plot point. You know, you like there's this monster and everything's mysterious, right? But obviously for a show to grow, you have to have different plots and different villains and new characters being introduced, which they were all great. The characters we met through season two, season, you know, we saw got Desmond, we got Ben, we got Juliet, we got like really good Richard. Um, we got really good characters. So at the end, Lapidus, the airplane pilot, Jeff Fahey, who is also in Grindhouse. I think it did a good job of like, like having a life, right? Because uh, you're on an island, like what, how much can you do? Unless you're Gilligan's Island. It has a lot of similarities to Gilligan's Island. So like if it was in that like slapstick comedy, it probably could have like lasted like really long just being on the island. But I guess Gilligan's Island had like some crazy storylines too. They had some crazy plot twists and shifts, um, <laughs> which I love. I love Gilligan's Island, which is why I love Lost, I guess too. And it just was, it was good. But like it does get wacky. I thought season two was like not very good. The whole hatch season, like looking back in the like, I guess it's kind of why I stopped doing the breakdowns of the seasons because season two, I was kind of like, it's kind of boring if I'm being honest. Like I still really was invested in the characters. So I watched. But season two had to happen because I, I was asking my husband. I was I'm like, so I have like literally such bad heartburn, like all reflux, like getting pregnant over here. I was asking my husband, I was like, what's the point of the hatch? Like, it blew up. Like, you know what I mean? Spoiler. All this is spoilers alert, by the way. But, you know, that had to happen in order to, like, get to the others and all this. Like, you know, that like, there was this, like, series of events. Oh, and and the the freaking magnetism shot up into the world, you know, into the, the sphere. And season three was phenomenal. I thought season three was so good. We got, like, the whole new slew of characters. We got to see the others in, like, their, their campsite just really – on, you know, and then we saw the Islanders. There's a lot happening in season three without it being too kooky. Season four. What was season four? I'm drawing a blank on season four. Season four was good. Season four, I want to say, is when they get off the island. Like they're showing the flash forwards of them off the island, I think. So, yeah, I think those are good. I can't remember. Now, season five gets kooky because season five, you're like, now you're time traveling and you're just like, what the hell is happening? And that was a weird season. I liked it, but they're all of a sudden in like 1977 and they're in the Dharma Initiative and it's it's wacky. It's weird. Like nothing kind of makes sense to the original storyline. <laughs> they're stuck there. They're like they keep time traveling. We're introduced. OK, we'll do the awards because we're introduced to like really the, like the dumbest characters of this of the show. Um, the characters, not the actors, not anybody personal, just the characters. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I kind of, we watched it and it was interesting. Did it hold my interest? Yes. Was I like, what the hell is happening? Yeah, that too. And then season six just gets so nutty. It gets so biblical. It gets so deep. You start like, they start introducing like new characters you're supposed to care about, like Jacob and all of a sudden the man in black. And, and like, yes, they're integral parts of the story. And like, they're kind of like giving this whole deep meaning behind the island and what the island is and like what's all happening. But you're just kind of like too little too late, maybe. People start getting possessed. Characters start getting wonky. But season six has a lot of main character deaths, which I thought like the one episode of them on the submarine towards the end, Saeed and uh, Sun and Jin, all these people behind me, their death, Ben is Hurley. And I love that episode. I thought that episode was really great. And it, again, it kind of brought back the emotion of the show, the characters, because you do kind of lose main character a little bit here, me being a writer over here. I feel like you do lose a little main character development like through season five or th really through season like three to six. Like a lot of our main characters, our heroes kind of go to the side. Jack's like way to the side in like season five and six. He's kind of like just goes along for the ride. And like, what the hell happened to Jack? And Kate doesn't get really any smarter. I mean, kudos to Kate I, for killing the smoke monster, John Locke. You know, that's like, I was, I was shocked. I was like, oh, she, she did something. Cause she was always just getting into a mess. Like she was always trying to save people. I didn't want to be saved. They're like, why did you come back? I literally didn't know if she came back. Like we were having a good life. She screwed it up with Sawyer and Juliet with freaking, um, Juliet and Jack. Like she just always was trying to like help people that didn't want to be helped. And they said it to her. So I was like, girl, Get it together. But she did save Jack by shooting Smoke Monster John Locke. So that was iconic. So good job, Kate, on that one. But uh, yeah, it was it was a doozy. So let's get into the awards. It was – it honestly, like I said, the finale was really good, I thought. Like I love that they were all being brought together. Desmond, you know, there's all the characters 
being brought together. And then they felt like there was a reunion. I don't know. I just like wanted to be a part of it. I was like, this looks like something I want to be a part of. Let's get in to the Lost Awards for since the since we are at the series finale. Okay, so there's a lot of villains, a lot of villains in Lost. And I have to say the villains were kind of the best part because you know what? I actually really hated all the villains. When I first saw Ben Linus appear, I was like, that guy has an annoying face. Like I was angry at the actor. I was like, annoying face. I don't like him. Why is he on the show? How do you get casted? By the end of the show, I like Ben Linus best character. Hands down, Mike Emerson won an Emmy to portraying him. Like, it was so good. Same thing with Ethan, the Dharma Initiative surgeon. Um, like, his face annoyed me. I, like, literally couldn't stand him. And because he was, like, the orig- the first baddie we saw. The first kind of, like, ooh, secret baddie. And he bothered me. But then, of course, that makes – that's a good actor because you're like, I don't like this person. So I thought that was – I thought they were really good villains – a lot of the others are really good villains. There was an older man that was had such a strong face as one of the others. He's kind of clean shaven, had gray hair. Um, really good villain. Um, there, there's a lot of honorable mentions, that's for sure. I thought Son's dad was a great villain. Um, I thought Smoke Monster John Locke, we'll get to that, is like a really great villain. I thought the Man in Black was a great villain. But... The best villain and probably the most underrated character of the show, maybe even actor of the show. I don't know. I'm obsessed like with looking up actors. I look this actor up. He hasn't like, I'm not saying he hasn't done a lot. I just didn't recognize anything he's been in. So I don't know why he's not working more. Honestly, I would cast this person in literally everything I do. He was so good at this character, but just like such a good actor, like the way he would like react to things, his little smiles and smirks when like you don't think you would like make that as an acting choice. I'm not an actor, by the way. Just <laughs> also disclaimer. I'm literally just a pregnant bitch watching Lost for the first time 18 years late. But <laughs> he was so good. And that was the villain, Kimi. I freaking uh, thought he was so good. And he was really good in his season. I think maybe he was on this fifth season. Oh, was it? Or fourth season. Maybe he was the fourth season when they crashed, like, the people, like, the planes were coming and people were, like, landing on the island. Maybe it was the fourth season we introduced those people and Kimi. And he, they were a part of Whitmore's crew to come and, like, basically kill everybody on the island, I guess. It was confusing. It was because there was those three scientists, which we'll get to in a second. I'm not really sure their purpose. Oh, they were trying to find Ben for Whitmore. Okay, that's what it was. Kind of was a blur. But Kimi was so good that season. I loved him. He was such, like, a baddie villain. Like, he ended up killing Ben Linus' daughter in front of him. Like, he was just cold, scary. Like, he was the, he had the explosive on his own arm. That's what it was at the end of season four. He had the explosive on his own arm. Like, this guy was balls into it. Like, so into it. But what really made me, like, score Kimi was, like, the sixth season. He kind of was back on their parallel universe. And he's kind of like this, like... Um, I guess like a mob man or something. I don't know. He's he's some kind of boss, right? I don't know. Some kind of boss and like Jin's owing him money and something with Saeed happens with him and he's like making eggs in this kitchen. Like it's this parallel universe and it's a different Kimi because Kimi dies, right? He, she, he dies in this in season four or something. And it was just so cool. Like he was such a cool actor. So I like looked him up. I'm like, is he Russian? Like what is his background? I think he was just straight up like New York Italian. Same thing with the man in black. I was like, oh, that guy looks like Israeli. Like I always think there's something like exotic. And then they're like New York. And I was like, OK. But they both had such unique features. Like they almost looked like they could be, um, you know, international or something. I don't know. They just had such cool looks. And like Kimi looks like the baddie from Rocky. Like he could be Apollo. <laughs> I haven't seen the Rocky movies, but I think there's a guy named Apollo in there. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I really liked him. And I was like, wow, I really like this character. I think he was like way underrated on the show. I think they could have used him like so much more. And yeah, I don't know. I just I really liked him. He's a really good actor. And it's not even that I think like he's hot. Y'all know I think Saeed. I was like, oh, we're watching this. Saeed is so damn fine. But it's not that I thought he was hot because that's not my type. He was just like such a good actor. I don't know how to say it. He gets the best villain. Like, Ben Linus was good, but at the end of the day, like, you know, he's he's iconic. To me, it was an obvious choice, so I went with Kimi. Worst, like, character arc development, whatever you want to call it, I have to I, – I, I'm going to say this because I started watching the show for him. I loved him. Saeed, like, 
again, this is no sh- no hate to the actor because Naveen Andrews is freaking God. Like, I love him so much. He's the reason we started watching Lost. We saw him in the dropout and I was like, who's this person? And then we started watching Lost. So, uh, you know, he pr- he did his best. And I've seen interviews since Lost where he's like, I don't even know what's, I didn't know what was happening past season two. Like, I'm just, I was just there. You know what I mean? Like, or he couldn't, I guess he didn't say he didn't know what was happening. He couldn't find logic in what was happening, which I totally agree. Specifically for his character, Saeed. Saeed was such a badass character and so important, so integral, so unique, had like such unique skills. Like he had such a good character and he was, he was a good guy. And I don't necessarily mind the arc of him becoming bad or possessed. Basically, like it, this was confusing too in season six. He basically like dies. Well, season five, we like don't see him. Um, He like comes back to the 70s. I don't know, kills Ben, like, it just is all very, it's it's just a lot happening. (laughs) Then season six, he's, like, dead, or maybe this is season five, maybe season six. There's, like, a temple now, which is that part, that whole story could have just, we could have done them without that. He, like, dies, like, he's gonna live. Jacob's, like, his sight has to live, so people are, like, okay, we gotta save him. He's, like, being held in this water, he comes alive, and they're, like, he's alive, let him go, but then they, like, drown him, and he's dead. Sorry, he's dead, there's nothing we can do. Then he comes back to life like two hours later. Like nobody knows how he did this. The temple people don't know how he did this. Jacob doesn't, you know, Jack. Everyone's like, how the hell did this happen? But he comes back alive because he's like possessed. He's like some demon or something, I guess, brought him back. And like, yeah, he becomes like this sort of like, I guess, like demon. Basically, the temple people try to kill him because like uh, he's infected, I guess, with something bad. I guess Claire was infected too. I don't know if it's a smoke monster. I don't know what it is. It's the smoke monster takes form. Okay, we'll get into that. But like they're they're like all of a sudden bad. And so I, I don't know if it like gets progressively worse, but like now they're bad, so they're trying to poison him. Which like makes sense. He kind of becomes numb. Saeed is like this numb character all through season six. He's like, I don't feel anything. He's kind of just there to like kill people. <laughs> Which is like kind of a cop out for his character. I feel like his development was so much more than just a killer. Like, yes, he was like this Iraqi war uh, vet that like saw some shit, obviously. But he was just becoming so much more than that. And then they like reverted him back to that. And I was kind of like, oh, man, it just was weird. And he became just a blank slate. We got to see like a little bit more of him like when he reunited with Shannon or ultimately his death he ended up saving his friends so I don't know like it was maybe he was so cold and numb so he just like saved his friends and Saeed's death also was a little bit of a disappointment a little bit of a cop-out like I just feel like it's like the last season of Game of Thrones right like they just kind of like threw away main characters when every other death on Game of Thrones up to season I think season six they had too was so iconic and like just so much thought and filming went into that Charlie's death like you could just tell they just spent so much freaking time filming and thought and you know, Charlie had such a physical death. Saeed just takes the the bomb and runs away with it. <laughs> and that's it. There's like a little explosion and obviously the submarine explodes. But I just feel like he could have done so much more. He's so capable. He could have had like such a more epic death. Like I honestly think they should have let him just, I guess, drown in that pool, which I guess he dies at the hands of someone. I guess he went out on his own terms saving his friends. So there was like a little bit of good left in him. A little stereotypical to be like, okay, you're going to go with the bomb and just like implode yourself basically. I don't know. It was just very predictable, maybe not predictable, boring. I was really sad. Saeed was my favorite, like definitely my favorite character. Between him and Harley, like favorite characters for sure. I was like, that's the death. Um, disappointed. Sun and Jin was also like they died right away after that. They were like in the submarine. Sun gets pinned down. Jin's trying to save her. Sawyer tries to save, and Jack tries to save her. Sawyer ends up getting hit in the head, so Jack has to save Sawyer. And since Jin's like, just go, just go, because at this point he's like. I'm not going to be able to save Sun, but I'm not going to, like, let her go again. Because they had just reunited after, like, two seasons of not seeing each other. of trying to find each other through the 70s. And also, they had just reunited. So he's like, I'm not leaving you again, bitch. Like, I'm staying here. I bawled. <laughs> I bawled. That was the death I bawled in so much. They are such good actors. I freaking love these two. So good. Good deaths, too. They died together. It was the water filling up like it was it was anxiety ridden like that was so cool. I feel like with any TV show like Desperate Housewives had a lot of deaths too. I just feel like 
the death should be iconic. And I feel like Saeed had a freaking Nicolette Sheridan moment. Edie Falco got killed by freaking she just swerved and crashed into a pole. I was like, there's so many iconic deaths and people to do it by the hands by. It's like, that's how that's how they do that to these characters. I don't know. I have chocolate ice cream, so it might be in my mouth. I don't know. I was, um, I don't know. Sun and Jin death. Amazing, though. OK, best plot twist storyline. That's going to John Locke. Like. Plot twist and overall character change and also, also like best actor should go to Terry O'Quinn. So good. Fun fact, the only actor that didn't have to audition for Lost because he was working on Alias at the time with J.J. Abrams when this show came about. Didn't have to audition. How badass is that? We freaking love Terry O'Quinn so much. Looked him all up. Know everything about his life. Love him. Uh, <laughs> he he was so like his character. So John Locke's character does end up dying. I want to say season six or into season five or something like that. Like, yeah, he ends up dying like at the hands of Ben, ben Linus, which is like crazy. But basically it was like talking about of like killing himself. He's like basically going to hang himself. He's like, come down, come down. Only for Ben Linus to kill him. I'm not really sure why that was. Originally, I thought like, oh, he could only go back to the island if Ben, if someone else killed him. And if he took his own life, it didn't count. That's the only thing I could think of. I don't know. Some, sorry, dumb bitch over here. I don't know. But then he like comes back to life on the island. And everyone's like, John Locke's alive. What the hell? But no, the smoke monster, we learn, takes like possession of people's bodies. Um, Which is crazy because like John Locke's body is like seen there. That's how they find out like he's been possessed. Or he's been taken form of John Locke. But then like Jack's dad's body was gone. We never found his body. So it's like he didn't need the physical body. It was very confusing. But he's basically taken over by the man in black, which well, I guess we should talk about that. But he basically becomes like evil. He's basically like the devil on the island in the form of John Locke. And Terry O'Quinn's like acting like this is where I like I just I see the actor. And I'm just like, wow, he gets so cold. His eyes are so dead. When talking about when like lying to people, talking to people, conversing with people like he's just he has this look of pure evil. And John Locke was always just like lovable, likable, like love John Locke, like just gave his dad a kidney, forgave his dad multiple times, trying to make it work with his woman. Like he's just like a lovable character. So for him to look the exact same in the exact same outfit, all of a sudden just be blank and cold and people calling him Locke, you're just like (gasps) he was so terrifying so scary in that turn I thought like wow that was that's acting (laughs) it really showed his range I hope he I think he did win an Emmy I think he won an Emmy but I don't know what year it was I think he might have been the first one like in the first in the first couple seasons maybe I think he's like a legendary actor he was in the stepfather movies those like horror movies I think he's just kind of like legendary so good job Terry okay okay let's talk about because I think it's going to come up to what I was just saying so that was the best plot twist storyline where I'm just like, ooh, I can get into this. The worst plot twist storyline, which is like crazy because it kind of ties everything together and it's kind of this big ending and it makes sense and all. All right. Is Jacob and the Man in Black? First of all, the casting. I'm going to, yeah, you know me, I'm, I'm very personable. I like to know my actors. I like to know, you know, I just, I thought they nailed casting spot on. Every single person spot on, like spot on. Because honestly, like, the actress of Angelina Lilly cast to play Kate. Like, Kate was just, like, kind of not a great character. So I don't, like, put any blame on her. But, like, she fit that role. You know what I mean? <sighs> Jacob and Man but Jacob and Man in Black are basically like God and the devil. They're basically kind of. They were, like, brothers. Messed up mom. Their mom was, like, killed. One went evil. One went good. One was, like, the protector of the island. Swore to protect it from his mom who killed his actual birth mom. And then Man in Black... Was just trying to like get off the island, just trying to like, you know, abandon them, whatever. So it's kind of like good and evil, kind of like brothers. It's kind of like, I don't know the biblical reference here. I want to say like the prodigal son kind of. I don't know. There's some biblical reference there, I'm sure, or mythology. Um, So it was, it was kind of weird. It kind of was like sprung onto us. Like Jacob was kind of sprung. And Jacob, both the actors weren't that like screen grabbing presence like it they kind of like looked modern day but they were supposed to be old I don't know like Richard really good casting his name's Nestor Carbonell his wife just came out with a book called all is not lost and all the lost cast members are promoting it I want to watch it I don't know if it's about lost or she just kind of did like a little pun or maybe she was on the show I don't know 
but <laughs> he was perfect. He was so good. And he was casted as like a in like the 1800s or something. So he had the long hair. But then as time went by, he was age. He didn't age. He got modernized. But Jacob and the man in black kind of looked the same throughout their entire journey. And they just weren't like strong presences. I don't know. Nothing about me made me care about these characters, even though they were like the most important characters. They're the protector of the island. They were they were there. They weren't born there, but they were like there from the beginning. I don't know. I thought it was so underwhelming for the final season. I like the final season. I like the flash sideways. I like the parallel universes. I liked it. There was one full episode dedicated to Jacob and the Man in Black as little boys. And I was just like, or as boys. And then they grew up. I just didn't care. I did not care. I was like, I miss Sawyer. Like, where is those characters? You know what I mean? It was like a whole episode. I just have to think that either the actors were over it. So they didn't want to be in every episode at the end. Salaries were getting too high. I'm sure they had a big budget. So they didn't put every character, all the main characters in. They ran out of storyline for their characters. You know, it did get kind of repetitive, I suppose. I'm just not sure. I think about it and I'm just like, I'm just not sure what's happening. Uh, mm, Jacob's death, anticlimactic. Man in Black's death, kind of anticlimactic. I'm like, that's it? That's all they had to do to kill him? Just freaking Kate over here who like didn't get anything right all six seasons? <laughs> it was, uh, I think they got lazy. I think they got lazy. But like, of course you're going to get lazy the last season. You're like, it's the last season. I think that was like the happened with Game of Thrones. So I think if you are a fan, I can see how it can be disappointing. But from like a creative perspective, actor's perspective, writer's perspective, they're probably like, let's just get this shit wrapped up. You know what I mean? Let's just, it's been six seasons. You know what I mean? So I, I get it. I do get it. But I was, I, they honestly just could have showed the parallel universes and things. I guess you needed, a, you needed something to go with. But once we found out like with a smoke monster and what it was all about, it wasn't like that scary. Why was a smoke monster always making noises like a freaking choo-choo train? Like it was just a person. Why did he have to go every time? You know, it's just, it just didn't seem as like big as grand. All right, moving on. <laughs> I'm stuffed up. My nose is always stuffed up. Another pregnancy symptom. Um, so we talked about the saddest. That's which your son and Jim. The most unnecessary storyline or season, I should say. I was kind of getting to this earlier. The 70s, the flashback is like, what? Like, I really do think they're just like, let's put these characters in the 70s. <laughs> let's just, you know, it didn't make sense. Some of their characters kind of stuck with their character integrity. Sawyer and Juliet were just like chilling like they were just content there um it, yeah but the the three main characters I just feel were like such a waste and like God bless the actors honestly I would take these roles too I'd take any of the roles like give me any role whatever were my least favorite which I think my husband would disagree he did like Verity I just couldn't get into these characters from day one them being a villain and then turning good and just I uh, mm. so it was three scientists there was Charlotte Faraday and Miles Miles was like talk to dead people um and Miles lasted M Miles was like in the whole thing till the end but I just could not I don't know what it is the chemistry between them or the chemistry between them and the other people on the island already I thought Lost did a really good job introducing new characters. Totally did. Juliet, like, loved. Desmond, loved. You know, but Ben loved. These three, I don't know what it was. And even the pilot that was with them, Verity, or um, I'm sorry, Lapidus and Frank Lapidus and Kimi were part of their little crew, right, with Whitmore. Charles Whitmore, too, was also not iconic to me. I thought he could have been more iconic. But they were all kind of in the Whitmore crew. And... I just was underwhelmed <laughs> by the characters. I just don't know. And again, I don't know if they like there just wasn't good chemistry. I'm not sure what it is. I'm sure a lot of people disagree because like I said, my husband really liked the Faraday character. He was like a scientist. He was the one that kind of knew the time travel kind of knew to get the, you know, the constant in the t area you're at versus the area. <sighs> Miles was like good. He talked to dead people, but we had Hurley for that. He also kind of was like this, had this weird character like, um, I guess, point that they wanted to make of him being kind of like a weirdo, like lady, like into like really creepy into ladies. <laughs> there was like moments of that that we saw where he was like trying to get with Claire and just like just it was just an odd character choice. And then Charlotte, like bless her heart. I just I don't know. 
it was just like this weird thing of like, are they nice? Are they bitchy? Are they mean? Are they the villains? Are they good guys? And it wasn't intriguing. It wasn't fascinating. It was just like, I'm kind of confused on all the choices. Um, you know, because again, the characters we've met, Mr. Echo was freaking phenomenal. I wish he would have stayed all the seasons. There was something so odd about this choice. And it really has nothing to do with Lost, but <laughs> just for I kept looking at Faraday and I had no idea what I had seen him in before. I I just was like, I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, but why does he remind me of like Charles Manson? Like he just looked like a serial killer, which was like not the vibe, like he was a scientist. Like he was like a really like high up there scientist. He was at like freaking what's as Oxford or something in England. But he just looked like a hippie serial killer. <laughs> like, and he did play Charles Manson and like Helter Skelter. And I was like, that makes sense. That actually makes perfect sense for this role. And that's all I could see. But that's all I saw before I even knew that. And I was just like, this is such a weird casting. Charlotte, too. I feel like Charlotte was, should have been on like Desperate Housewives. I feel like she walked off the Desperate Housewives set and came on to Lost. And it, I just, you know, their dust didn't impact me. Their their connection didn't impact me. Um, And I again, I'm not blaming actors on this because I think, OK, maybe it's lack of chemistry. But I also just think lack of like poor writing like for the characters. There's no there's no redeeming quality they could think of that they didn't even portray. I just think there just was no redeeming qualities for them to portray. There was nothing interesting. There was nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like Frank Lapidus, comedic relief. Kimi was like this really scary bad guy. Like Mr. Echo, strong presence. Ben Linus had a strong presence even though his was like different. He had this, yeah, you know, like creeper vibe. I don't know if they were too young to normal maybe they look kind of just normal I don't know I don't know what it was I just thought that like whole storyline and those characters just we could have just done completely without I don't think they moved the story further a little bit Faraday because of the time travel like Desmond was able to figure out this whole time travel situation um you know ultimately getting to talk to Penny and Penny coming to save them and stuff but I don't know let me know your thoughts <laughs> Sorry, I'm like really burpy okay so I think that was it for my notes. <laughs> Those were the lost awards. That was the lost finale as whole by Trish. I know this podcast has been a mega hit. We love this. 18 years late to the lost. Trish. If you guys want to watch lost, it's on Hulu. It's so good. It's it was my favorite. It beat Desperate Housewives. I love Desperate Housewives. I wish Desperate Housewives would come back. I want to be on Desperate Housewives more than anything. But I think Lost beats it. And I think it's the ensemble cast. And Desperate Housewives has a really great cast. I think the five main ladies of Desperate Housewives are like the best. I think all the men, not all the men, 50% of the men supporting, so good. But I love this whole cast. Even if they kind of annoyed me, Jack and Kate got hella annoying at some points. But they like made the show too. Like they're main characters and they kind of make the show. Okay. All these other ones, Sun Jin, Hurley, Saeed, uh, Locke, and so like – so good like so good I actually looked up to see like I don't know what I was looking up like who's the most popular or who's done the most shit since and actually coming in at number one you know coming in at number two was Sawyer Josh Holloway over here he's been like working he's on Yellowstone he's on 1883 he's like working he looks the exact same my poor husband <laughs> we're in bed on Instagram I'm like showing him like literally everybody I'm like oh my god he looks the exact same 18 years later like okay he was like probably 35 on the show he's probably 50 now they're all in their 50s phenomenal we looked up Kate on on Instagram looks phenomenal she has like short blonde hair now kind of a little like political for my taste which kind of makes sense in like the character of Kate too it's kind of like she would be the one political she's kind of like at the beginning of COVID she was kind of anti-mask or something uh but that makes sense kind of and she looked phenomenal so we're just going that Terry Quinn I haven't seen like recent pictures um I did find him on Instagram I don't know if it's like an Instagram he runs probably not um, but he looks very different throughout his career. So I don't know. I haven't seen him, so I can't really say. Freaking Jack over here, Matthew Shepard. No, Jack Shepard played by Matthew Fox. He like retired <laughs> after Lost, like literally peaced out, like did not do a single television appearance since Lost since this year. Surprise, like 2022, he's doing something on Peacock. I don't know what the the show is, but he was doing an interview about it. He had like some scandal... Again, it's, it's like an alleged scandal. It's kind of like a wishy-washy one. I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to comment on it. I don't know. But he did have like some accusations. He vehemently denied. Charlie, ironically, though, Dominic Monaghan like was like, 
he kind of pushed the narrative that those accusations are true. Again, I don't know. I didn't look too much into it. I don't really know. I kind of didn't want to. I was just kind of like, let me just keep Jack Shepard in like my mind as this. But he's back on TV doing something. I guess he said he was just done with acting. He's like, I had a bucket list, did bucket list. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to be with my family, which respect. Um, Saeed over here. It's like, where are they now? This is the reason we started watching Lost. He was on the dropout on Hulu and it was so good. He looks so different in the dropout, like so different as far as changing the most, probably him. But then I saw him in an interview with Amanda Seyfried. They were doing like interviews or whatever for the show and he looks so good. So I don't know. I, I heard they put like a little pillow in his belly, which first of all, I love the belly. I thought it was real. I thought it was everything. Um, and then I guess he did gain weight like for his face and stuff like that. He said for the role, like 20 pounds, because when I saw him on the thing, he looked totally he looked like a freaking Calvin Klein model. He had like this black trench coat on his black hair. And I was like, OK. And I guess he like took some time off to like raise he has two kids. I don't know everything about him. Uh, and I guess he took some time off to raise his youngest child, which is pretty cool. Um, I think there's an age gap between them, but I think he's of the same name and very handsome. He's taken his sons to uh, premieres and stuff like that. They look just like him. And I think that's cool. I think and he was doing an interview about the dropout. And he's just like, yeah, after this, I just he doesn't like search for acting jobs. He like takes them if they come. And he's like, I just focus on being a dad. And I think that's so cool. We love Saeed. We love Naveen Andrews. He's so good. He's been in like the most like movies, I feel. Um, and then not pictured here is Anna Lucia. Anna Lucia was number one. Michelle Rodriguez, which makes sense. She was in all the Fast and the Furious movies. It makes sense. I was shocked to see her on Lost. I was shocked to see her written off. Not my favorite on the show, but I think it's more just like the character and not her. Hurley, Jorge Garcia, he did Once Upon a Time, and I heard he's in the new Munsters, the Rob Zombie, which I think is so cool. I think he's like a, a new, unique character. Loved Hurley. Such a good character. Such good comedic relief. I loved him. I want to be a Hurley. Like, uh, that's my goal. I want to be on a TV show, and I just want to have the part written for me because it was written. I believe he auditioned for Sawyer, so they they wrote it for him. They saw him on, like, Curb Your Enthusiasm or something like that, or maybe not that, maybe, like, rest of, one of those shows. I don't know what it was. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I haven't seen any of them. And then um, Sun and Jin over here, they just, you know, Daniel Day Kim being in everything, Hawaii Five-0, um, just in so many shows. I don't really know what Sun is doing. So I'm sorry. I loved her. I don't really know what she's doing. And then Ben Linus killing it. He's in so many shows like person of interest. Uh, he's acting. He's uploading to his Instagram. Looks the same. They all look so good. They all look amazing. I looked up Richard. He looks the same. Like I said, him and his wife are, have this new book called All Is Not Lost. Nestor Carbonell. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, He's the one with like the eyeliner. But he got like literally all the characters like Ben Linus. You can go on his Instagram Jorge Garcia. Carlos? Carlos Gomez? Was he on Lost? I don't know. Desmond. I just love seeing all them. Oh, look how pretty Julia is with the book. So, how I friended failure on the island and found a way home. Was she on there? Because it said it's written by Shannon Kenny Carbonell, which I think is his wife. Let me just look this up real quick. Was she on the show? Shannon Carbonell. She is an actress. Maybe she was on Lost. It doesn't say. It says she was on 7th Heaven. Let me see. I mean, that'd be everything if she was. I think it just, I don't know. I have no idea. But it says, how I reclaim my identity after setting aside my Hollywood. I don't know. I guess she like put aside her life for her family. I love that. I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, I guess check that out. But yeah, everyone looks really good. All the cast looks amazing. Matthew Fox looks amazing. Like everyone looks really good. Ben Linus looks the same. Like how do you look that good like 18 years later? I guess between 35 and 50, like you don't – no, you would age a lot then. I don't know. It's amazing. I don't know. I feel like I look like I'm 50 and I'm only 34 years old. <laughs> so it happens. So this is my lost shirt. Got it off Amazon. Charlie is doing a podcast. Like he's, he, he's killing it. He was Lord of the Rings before Lost, and now he's doing a podcast. And um, yeah, I just like looking them all up. Claire, I don't really know. I didn't really know what she was up to, but hey, I think it's cool. Shannon, I've seen her out and about. She was at some Comic Con. Someone tweeted me a picture with her. She looks good. Oh, Ian Summerholder, who freaking played Boone, went on to be like Vampire Diaries, kind of like iconic. Yeah, it was really cool. So, anyways, <laughs> that's my recap. I know I sound out of breath just sitting here. I'm a little warm. And, um, yeah, that was lost. I can't believe it's over. I'm so sad it's over. 
I think that's it for this podcast, y'all. And unless one of unless one of the actors from Lost, even if you were a, a background actor, if you want to make a special appearance on the Lost podcast, we can always bring it back. But say goodbye to the crew and the cast or the cast rather. You guys did so good. Good job, guys. It was an obsession, a phase, an era in my life that I will always cherish. It'll be the most important thing I've done is watching Lost. Help me got through my pregnancy. I loved it so much. I felt lost in another world. It, it was the topic of all our dinner conversations for the past two months between me and my husband. Through my COVID, through this pregnancy, it just, thank you. Thank you, J.J. Abrams. Thank you, Lost. Thank, and thank you, Damon Lindelof, Lindleaf, writer who became executive producer who wanted to write on Alias. Didn't get the job. Now he's on Lost. Executive producer. Wrote the show. So good. <laughs> I know all this stuff about everyone. And yeah, that's it. So have a good one, guys. Check out Lost. Thanks for watching this podcast. You are everybody. You are everybody. Uh, uh.